We're considering Jesus together in our A Wonderful Day in the Lord broadcast, looking at uh, things that happened in the Old Testament that uh, prefigured things that would happen in the New Testament, especially pertaining to Christ himself. So we've looked at a number of these things that, some, that are sometimes called types uh, that shadow and, and pre prefigure something that Christ would do or something about his person. And today we're going to combine his person with his actions in the issue of the high priesthood of Christ. We know in the Old Testament that the high priest of Israel was a very important person. Aaron was the first high priest, uh, and as the, uh, the priesthood was set up, uh, we would find that the, from that point on, the high priest would come from the lineage of, of Aaron. And uh, from that point on, at least supposedly, it was supposed to be this way, that the high priest would always come from, from the lineage of, of Aaron himself. And that high priest played a very important role in the uh, sanctification of the people and bringing the blood sacrifices in, uh, for the people, being involved in that, especially on the holy day of the uh, Day of Atonement when the high priest would enter the, the Holy of Holies on behalf of the people. So the high priest played a very, very important role. And then we come to the New Testament and we start looking at Jesus. And uh, we find in the book of Hebrews that Jesus would become our high priest. It's interesting, as important as this role is for Jesus, and as, as important as it is for us, that the only book in the New Testament that talks about this is the book of Hebrews. And the book of Hebrews talks about it a lot. There's just a, a large section of the book of Hebrews that goes through what this high priestly ministry of Christ is all about. And so we want to look at one of the most important sections of Hebrews on that subject. That is chapter 4, verses 14 to 16. So read with me, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. So he begins with a statement here about the fact that Jesus Christ now has become our great high priest. Jesus is going to do for us what no human priest could ever have done. Aaron was at a wonderful role. It was a wonderful honor given to him by God. But he was a man. He was a sinner. And he could not do for us what Jesus Christ could do for us, who is our ultimate and our great high priest. In verse 9, 15, it says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, Jesus, uh, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet without sin. So he wants to point out here that this high priest who is Jesus, who is sinless, who is perfect, nevertheless can sympathize with our weaknesses because he has lived the life as a human being. He lived on this planet. He went through the hardships and the ups and downs and the temptations that you and I face, even though he never sinned. But he's not without understanding. He understands what we go through. He understands our pain. He understands our, our weaknesses. He understands how easy it is to fall. And so when we go to this great high priest, uh, we go to one who, who is not just God. He is the God-man. He is not just one who is, is perfect from all eternity, but he is one who has experienced the, the very great battles of temptation like you and I. And he can be on our side at such times. He sympathizes with us. Then in verse 16, therefore, so he draws a conclusion here. He draws an invitation. Let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Because Christ is our great high priest, because he has been where we have been and understands our temptations and our, our struggles, therefore we are invited to draw near with confidence to the throne of grace. This is the only place in the Bible where it mentions the throne of grace. It is God's throne, obviously, but out of that throne pours out the grace of God. And when we come to him with confidence, because he's invited us, because he's met every uh, qualification for inviting us as our high priest, we come before him with confidence in this throne, and what do we find? Not condemnation, not I told you so's, not harshness. We find mercy 
and we find grace to help in time of need. Mercy to be there when, we, when we're really down and struggling. Grace to empower us to be what God wants us to be. And both are given at our time of need. Now, when are we going to most likely go before the throne of grace in prayer with confidence? It's going to be at our time of need. When we recognize our, our failures and our weaknesses and we go before him at such a time and we cry out to him and what we find there, our great high priest who has mercy on us and graces us at our greatest time of need, there we find his grace and mercy. What a, what a wonderful thing pointing to us, prefigured by, by the Old Testament priest, pointing to Christ and what he's done for us in, uh, in, in his walk on earth and what he does for us now as our high priest. That ought to give us a wonderful day in the Lord.